All right, I was asked about my perspective on black women, particularly certain little aspects. And it's useful towards a, something I've been wanting to mention, so instead of just responding to the person, I'm going to talk a while about this. First, here's the message that I got. Russ Lindquist, using my full name and a message, that was weird. Russ Lindquist, when you see a black woman, oh, and just for one good time when I refer to black in this, one big one of those, just because I don't typically refer to that except to try to explain some difference between white people and black people and black culture and white culture, all that. So one big quote. When you see a black woman, this is a black woman asking me this, by the way. When you see a black woman with short or bald hair, do you find her attractive? Do you or have you ever dated a black woman, Russ? If so, what is it like being with a black woman? Or if not, if you haven't been, why not? Also, why do you think some white males don't date black women who are available on the market? Why don't white males frequent black establishments or areas where black women are at, like social club, social and club events? And then she says, I mean, you're an attractive man who happens to be white, but you look black to me, LOL. Well, for one thing, I guess we'll take it in reverse order. Typically, in our culture, the white people that you'll see are soulless because if you have any spirit whatsoever, you get broken down in this culture. Now, as I've mentioned in a lot of other videos, black people have been left out of the mainstream for a long time, so you were let to have soul because, like, oh, you know, they, they can move that way or they can talk that way or be that honest. You know, let's just keep them away anyways. But, but white people were in a difficult situation where they were let into the status quo, but the status quo was poisonous as hell. So you had to go along to get along. And simply put, we are where we are, which is that the status quo is kind of changing and being more accepting of black people, but really just cartoon characters of different kinds of black people. But still, typically you run into soulless or weak-minded, whiny white men. Simply, yeah, I seem black to, to plenty of people when they deal with me. And that's even just this, but when I'm in person, certainly so. When I would perform music live, just the stuff that you might have seen on my videos, plenty of people, especially black women, say that. Like, you seem black. And it's interesting because typically when you hear someone say, oh, Russ acts black, or Russ, or if you were to hear them say, Russ acts black or seems black, of course there's that connotation of thuggish or ghetto or something like that. That's the only time you really hear that because plenty of people don't have any frame of reference for the difference between white and black besides, oh, white people are more polite and black people are less polite, something stupid like that. So when they say acting black, typically people will mean ghetto or loud or something like that. When, if you pay attention, or if you watch some of my videos also, you know that there are, culturally speaking, we're not talking race, of course, but culturally speaking, whites have been socialized in a way and blacks have been socialized in a way where there are a lot of important differences between your average white person and, and black person, specifically in the United States. And that to act black is the only respectable, to act black is the only respectable way in plenty of circumstances because that has to do with coming across as being self-respecting yet self-centered. And of course, you know, white culture will even tell you just being self-centered whatsoever is a bad thing. You should always be leaning on somebody else, leaning and hoping that people will lean back for you. So I'll simply put, I, I do seem black but not for the reason that plenty of people um, would typically mean that. So to take it from the top, uh, when you see a when I see a black woman with short or bald hair, do I find her attractive? Well, for one thing, imagine that I don't like short or bald hair. Would I automatically not find them attractive? That's like saying if I liked somebody who happened to be a victim of a horrible burning, 
would I not be attracted to them? And maybe you're meaning just straight sexual attraction. Like, does my dick get hard if I see women with short hair or that are bald? But speaking more generally, burn victim, who I respect and admire their priorities, but they don't make my dick hard, or, or I cringe when I'm around because they look like they've been through so much. I don't do that. I'm not, not attracted to somebody because of something I severely dislike. And not to say that I dislike short uh, hair or bald hair, wait for it, but that's if I totally disliked it, I still, would be, I still wouldn't be less attracted. Um, one of the things that I'm happiest about when I was raising my daughter, who's now nine years old today, August 6th, my daughter's nine years old today, one of the things I was happiest about when she was three or four years old, we were going to the hospital to get her, she get check up every year because she was born so small, they, they, they want to just uh, keep an eye on her development, and she's been doing fine. And we walked past this person laying in a bed and just completely this kind of way with some kind of at least physical impairment. Something like a cerebral palsy, which in case you didn't know, it can be just a physical thing, meaning they can be completely normal, but they're just like spasticated, which is an actual term. And my daughter just, without missing a beat, engages people, regardless of if they look what we would consider weird or or messed up. She's completely, she has no frame of reference for holding people at arm's length because of the way they look, and not just in that pop culture. She accepts talking to black people and white people and Chinese people. No, I mean like, they could be a burn victim. They could be dressed any kind of way. Tattoos, no tattoos, tall, short. She just engages them. So that's something I'm happy about. But she got that from me. She got that from me being outgoing to everyone. So simply put, it's not enough for me if they have short hair or bald hair. Even if I severely dislike that, I could still be attracted to that person. But long story short, Growing up, I spent a lot of time in martial arts and in basketball. And neither of those can you have long, ridiculous hair as a guy or a girl. At the very least, it has to be pulled back. So most of my experiences with women that I found attractive early on was either in martial arts where they totally pull their hair back. And so that's attracted to me, the pull, pull back hair away from the face look. And basketball players especially, well, almost, I don't think any white women basketball players that I knew, but black women wished shaved heads for basketball. So, yeah, I can find a short hair or no hair person, black woman, attractive, It's but it's not enough to make her attractive. And again, it's certainly not enough to not make her attractive. Yeah, there you go. Have you, do you or have you ever dated black women or a black woman? Yes. If so, what is it like being with a black woman or if not, why? So anyhow, what is it like? It really depends. When you deal with somebody who has a very limited experience of the, some other thing than their own demographic, if they have a limited experience, they'll be like, oh, it's like this. Or, oh, black women are this. As you know, people are people first, and then maybe they go gender and then ethnicity or ethnicity and gender, however, whatever is more important to them. But long story short, <laughs> it depends on the person. Um, in our culture and in our world, black people, arguably even more so black women, but maybe arguably more black men, black people have often a higher context living, is what we call it, like crazy ass world around them. Some people call it high context living. But the high context living lends itself to extreme personality traits, meaning that while black people, but we're specifically talking about women, Black women can run the gamut, the, you know, the, the whole prism of, of characteristics, like um, loud as hell, quiet as hell, respectful as hell, disrespectful as hell, self-assured, self-disgusted, you know, and, and, every, and everything in between. But with the high context living that they're forced into by plenty of cultures, including the United States, they tend to go in, in, in a more extreme direction. They're not really just kind of sitting in the middle. Uh, so that being said, it really depends on the person, and even 
but but I've dealt with the gamut. I've dealt with a lot within the spectrum. But in addition to the person herself, the culture around does it does make a big difference uh, how people treat you. Plenty of people treat you. Uh, some people treat you like a will treat you like a race trader. Some people will treat the other person from the other race like a race trader. And equally disgusting to people who would treat you like a race trader is the people who necessarily think you're open-minded just because you're with this demographic. Like, oh, Russ, he's, he's respectful. No, you saw that video that made you think maybe he's racist? He can't be racist. He's, he dated a black woman. The Founding Fathers raped their slaves. It's not enough to be sexually attracted to somebody so that, you know, that's not enough to say, oh, they're, they're a respectful person. So my point is that one of the things that disgusted me, if I'm with specifically black women, but just any, any other demographic than my own, it was disgusting the people who, of course, think that you're not doing the right thing, necessarily, but equally disgusting is the people who think you are doing the right thing. Oh, you are on the right path, necessarily, because you're doing this open-minded thing. Now, you can be closed-minded. <coughs> I mean, for example, uh, plenty of people have a light supremacist or a, a white supremacist or even at least a light supremacist. The lighter you are, the more attractive you are. Plenty of people in the black community think like that, of course. And so... They're thinking, oh man, she must be in the right place, or oh, she's lucky, or she's come up, and all that, because she's with a lighter skin guy or a white guy, which is garbage. So, what is it like uh, dating a black woman or being with a black woman? It depends on the person, and it also depends, of course, on the context, of the social system. I mean, for example, I've dated black women when I was staying in the South, in Alabama and in Georgia, and that's very different than when you're staying out here in California. For example, in, in the South, it's, it's like pretty strongly divided to the people who, who are way cool with it. They're like, oh yeah, absolutely, you know, we're all people, and then everybody got a Southern accent, so everybody be talking about this. Yeah, we're all people, so it don't really make a difference or nothing. And then there's the people who just, of course, are totally against it, black and white. Of course, it's popular to show the racist white Southerner, but man, black Southerners can be something else. So, it depends on the the uh, society or you know the, the community that I'm in it makes a big difference too, but uh, yeah. Long story short, it depends on the person, uh, what it's like. Uh, yeah, I could get into more specifics, but yeah, that'll do for now. Also, why do you think uh, some white males don't date black women? It depends on the white male. Some white males go out of their way to date black women. That's the thing that that really I I usually take issue and go, huh, why is that? Usually it's because of some preconceived notion. You know, for example, that black women are necessarily hypersexual. So plenty of white guys want a black woman because they're that way. One of the things that I mention to people, especially white men, about the difference that you can often find between black women and white women is that while, like I said, they can, a black woman can run the gamut, in our culture, it's very easy to find a black woman who isn't as self-disgusted as a white woman. Of course you can find self-disgusted black women, but you can find, speaking sexually, you can find black women who just don't have all the weird hang-ups that a white woman has. And you can find white women who don't also, but I'm just saying, black women can, can be more energetic, and I don't mean energetic like do a lot of stuff, but... Like, they can have a, a stronger vibe sexually because they're not so hung up. But again, they can be the most hung up people you ever wanted, ever, you ever dealt with. So one of the things, that speaking as, as far as why white males don't they deal with, uh, and then the rest of it is about why don't white males frequent black establishments. Da, da. One of the reasons why black or white people don't deal with black establishments or date black people da, 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 is there's, there's still... I guess an open wound, however you want to say it. I mean, the fantasy television tells you it's just black people are accepting of white people, but white people aren't accepting of black people. So as, as, if I, as a white man, want to date a black woman, I'll just show up to her community and among her family, and they'll be like, oh, hey, you're open-minded. No. Get a lot of racist people in this culture still. 
you go to a black establishment, it doesn't take 10% even to be racist, angrily racist, to make your night terrible. It takes one. So it's that simple that it's, um, it can be a stressful environment. But even setting aside like overt racism and whatnot, there's a different vibe, real vibrations between plenty and white U.S. citizens and black U.S. citizens, and they just don't vibe. They don't meet up. For example, if a white person, a white man, if a white man is not insecure, he's liable to act silly, just tediously silly, consistently silly, tell jokes that aren't funny, act all kinds of ridiculous ways. Because the only thing holding them back from trying that is insecurity, it's called um, arrested development. He's stuck back wishing he could have been whatever it was, five, six, or seven years old, whatever age he started really getting trampled down and expected to stiffen up and be white. He's stuck there, and he always wants to return to there. So as soon as he feels comfortable, he's acting that way. And so you have the strong, silent white guy, and then you know, then he deals with some black people, and and then he's strong and silent, but as soon as he gets comfy, he's acting weird as hell all the time. So simply, there, that, there's the not meshing of the vibe. That's another reason why white people and black people often choose not to deal with each other. I mean, it's very popular in, in plenty of white culture settings now to have that black friend, of course. But it's getting even worse where black people are having the, the white friend just because they're white. Meaning the white people have the black friend just because they're black, and they clearly don't really get along. It's it's a total, it's a novelty. It's like a pet. And, you know, that's gross. But setting aside the pet things, a lot of times it's just a too different of a culture to where white people aren't comfortable in that environment. Just as black people aren't comfortable, you're like, well, this is where the money is, so you know, they wear the suit and tie. Like, why are we dressed uncomfortable, telling lies and, and laughing at stuff that's not funny again? Says the black person in their mind when they're dealing with white people. Why are we doing this? When are we going to stop bullshitting and actually be realistic? Never! But likewise, white people can be amongst the black culture, and you'll have like the pseudo-revolutionaries or the, the drug addicts who act like it's someone else's fault that they're in a bad situation. And the white person's like, uh, at what point are you going to take personal responsibility whatsoever for your plight? Uh, yeah, it's fine to blame other people and hundreds of years ago some event, but... When are we actually going to talk about what we can do about it? We're just pretending like someone else holds all the cards and we have to just wait for them to play them right. Let's do something. And they're all up in their head doing that. Simply put, too different of a culture sometimes. And that's one of the reasons why uh, white males don't frequent black establishments and this and the other. Uh, I mean, you ha you're an attractive man who happens to be white, but you look black to me. Thank you. I think you look good, by the way. But one of the things I wanted to mention is with the... Uh, the hair is that something that, that kills it. I wanted to mention that in the context of the rest of the stuff, but I'll just say it now. When um, smokers are something that I can, just can't deal with, speaking specifically cigarette smoke, but anything. Oxygen is fundamental to our life. Smoking takes away your oxygen. It's fundamental to death to take away your oxygen. So one of the things I just don't deal with is smokers, any kind of smoke, because they're killing themselves, and I don't want to be around that taking away the oxygen. But as long as they are actively trying to stop, I can deal with them. Another thing that's just, because what I'm saying is I have very few just cutoffs where I just don't deal with certain people. One is smoking. Another is people who meticulously falsify their, their presentation, especially based on self-disgust. So when you ask about black women with short hair or bald hair, that's absolutely acceptable. What's not acceptable to me is the, as I've mentioned in plenty of other videos, the Michelle Obama look, the Oprah look, and you have it on one of yours, at least one, like what with the combed, burned, Europeanized hair. I don't deal with people who do that kind of stuff. Weaves, all that kind of stuff. Uh, like I said, plenty of us live in a high context living, black people especially, arguably black women especially. So, I don't hate when they try to look 
prettier than they are by having the longer hair than they do or straightening it you know, prettier. I don't hate them for it, but I don't encourage it. I don't deal with those kind of people. If I'm dealing with those people, that's the thing. It's like, well, you want to talk about this, that, or the other. Let's talk about your lack of self-respect. How did it come to be? How are you going to stop it? Because I don't want to deal with somebody on any level who's just everyday presentation is one that lacks self-respect. So I wanted to mention that also. Um, yeah, the, the natural look is all the only thing that, that I expect from a person, regardless of their race. Uh, that might be it. Mm, there were a bunch of other things that I wanted to mention. Yeah, long story short, that's my perspective on black-white relations and my, my experience. I'm trying to save... I don't want to drop this video yet. Hold on a second. Because I know there were some other things I wanted to talk about. Hmm. Oh, well, I, I guess the last I'll say is, yeah, we should... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, we, you and I will get along because I, I, I like your energy, but sometimes it goes in, in the direction of, oh, ooh, I'm glad I didn't turn off. Sometimes it goes in the direction of that, oh no, a long time ago someone that looked like me went through this, so therefore I'm justified in being anti-white or finding the, the, the white lining of any black problem and say, oh, it was white. That kind of stuff, if you've seen certain ones of my videos, I say it's not, that, hey, it's not fair to blame whites for your problem. I'm saying it's not effective. You're self-destructive in, in plenty of ways with how you go in this direction and say, like uh, today you posted this thing about there's a white guy that shot three people at some town hall meeting and you say like something like, obviously it's not black people that America needs to be careful of. And then I gave you that picture as a response to that video of the black guy in New Jersey that went in that woman's house and was beating the hell out of her. You can't wash away, you can't whitewash black problems, but you want to do it too often. And you know, it has to do with high context living and you seeing injustice and da da da. I'm not saying that I don't understand it, it's just not respectable because it's self-destructive and it doesn't actually solve the problem. If you have a problem, you can't point at me and say, oh, Russ, you have a problem as a white man, therefore I don't have a problem. That's a problem. You got to be realistic. So simply put, we could definitely hang out, get along, but it would be one of those things where I'm right there on your heels expecting you to be a little bit different in the way that you present things, a little less self-righteous. Um, and actually, that's something that I'm glad I thought of. That's something I wanted to mention in the context of what it's like to date um, or deal with, deal with black people in general as a, as a white man often or as a white person. Oftentimes, you'll get the whole having to prove yourself, like a, geez, there's a cat here, and so I got the cat here. Like Dave Chappelle said, he said, you'll see a group of black people, and, and nowadays you're going to see like a, a one or two or even three white dudes with them. And let me tell you something about those white guys. They're the most dangerous people. There's no, there's no telling what those white guys did to earn those black guys' respect, but those black guys have seen them do some wild shit. That's what Dave Chappelle said. I'm not that kind of white guy. I'm not the kind of white guy who starts thinking, well, I have to prove myself, but it's very popular when you deal with black people, especially black women. If I'm dating a black woman in this culture, all eyes on me to be like, all right, what super character does he have to overcome him having a small dick and, and having a high-pitched voice where he's not, blah, blah, blah. He must have money, but, you know, what, what's his vibe like? I'm simply saying that a lot of people come at me like that in general. Like when I mention things in videos that people think a white guy shouldn't say. Oh, you wouldn't say that to me in person. And meanwhile, they've never dealt with me in person. They've never dealt with someone like me in person of any race. But once they deal with me in person, they realize, you know, kind of like you said, you look black to me, I, I act black to people, which is, I live in a high context enough living to where I don't put up with bullshit. Not in that... I don't put up with bullshit kind of way, but in that way where I really don't, and it radiates everything that I do, and when people actually deal with me in person, and some people have come up to me and said, oh, you were on video, on the video, you said this and that about women or whatever, and, and, they, and they try to do whatever petty nonsense they would do, like 
try to make me backtrack. Like I'm going to be less likely to say something in person. I'm more likely to be polite about it because I don't want the vibe to destroy their possibility of understanding. But I don't back down from anything that I've ever said uh, in in these videos and whatnot. And so um, my high context living allows me to relate in a way to where I have too much self-respect to, for example, let you go off in these, these anti-white directions. Too much. I mean, you can go against the, the white supremacist establishment and all that kind of stuff, but when you start just saying white people in general or white genetics is this kind of way or uh, all that, I would be right there chopping that down every second. So feel free to engage me on that level. But that, that's the thing I'll end it on is, is that that's a huge element of dealing interracially in our culture is with the people who think you need to prove yourself. I mean, that I would need to prove myself as a non-black. And right away, the person with so little self-respect, the second you even accept that as the framework, you lose. By definition, you lose because that is a guilty, white, non-self-respecting thing to do. And, um, you know, in case you just joined us, I don't feel guilt for what someone else did somewhere else. I feel a sense of duty to not pretend that black people aren't disproportionately thrown into a high-context living. But if anything, that makes me more likely to say things that a certain black person won't like because it's what they need to hear regardless of what they want to hear. But um, that's one of those things that just is a constant theme when I deal with really anyone. Because when I deal with white people and they don't have a frame of reference for black people, well, black people are this way, they're the nicest people I met, or they're dangerous, or they're terrible, or I like them, or I don't. Like, how many black people have you dealt with, is what I'll say to them. Like, 70 million? Even with your 70 million, that's not enough. But of course, like I mentioned to them, you've dealt with like two. And people want to draw their big experience on black people or white people or straight people or gay people or Christians, any, anything based on like seven people that they've known. Well, no, I can just assume the rest. I don't do that. I deal with people as people first and then they can define, you know, like I said, some people would, after they're a person, they're, they're whatever gender they are or they're whatever ethnicity they are. I typically deal with people as people and cut through a lot of the nonsense, which again, kind of makes me seem black, which is unfortunate because it's not a racial thing, it's more of a cultural thing, but we do live in a garbage culture that rewards white people for being sort of soulless and leaning on the status quo, so I don't lean on the status quo. That's about it. You got any uh, questions or want clarification, let me know. Meanwhile, wear your hair natural, stop all that, and uh, yeah, that'll be it.